Hi everyone, welcome back to Orchid 101. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about fertilizer. And as you can tell, I have set up here all of my seedlings because today it is fertilizing day for all of my seedlings. But before I show you how I fertilize my seedlings, I just wanna to talk to you guys about fertilizer. And there is just such a huge quantity and variety of fertilizer out there on the market for orchids and for all plants in general that it sometimes may get a little bit confusing as to what kind of fertilizer we need to buy or what is a good fertilizer to use for our orchids or is this fertilizer going to help my orchid or is this fertilizer going to actually harm my orchid so i'm just going to go through what fertilizers I use, which is not a big list because I like to keep it, keep it short and simple. I don't like to complicate my life with a lot of different variety of things. I think and I feel like if we choose too many products and we use a wide variety of things, it gets too complicated. And then we start getting mixed up with which orchid did I give this kind of fertilizer to or did I give that orchid that fertilizer and that's why that one is doing better and this one is doing not so great. So I have a very small list of fertilizers that I like to use. Those are the fertilizers that I keep around on a, on a daily basis. Those are the ones I stay stocked up on. And so far they have been great. Now I did recently begin to grow seedlings versus buying them full size like I normally did. So um the seedlings are still being uh you know they're still trying to adapt to the fertilization and trying to adapt to my climate trying to adapt to the setup the media you know the humidity they're trying to adapt to a lot of different things so the seedlings i think are a best example when it comes to showing you how fertilizers work and how everything it does and I'm, I also want to show you, um, you know, how to pick up, pick out a fertilizer. Uh, now, I'm no expert on fertilizer by all means. I probably am using the wrong fertilizer myself, but this is just what I feel works the best. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what fertilizers I used. And of course, I always like to recommend something that works for me. So I will go ahead and do the same thing for you guys. So let's go ahead so and the start. the first product that I used, and it comes in this little tub because I just ordered the, the smaller size of it in order to just try it out for the first time. But I'm actually liking this fertilizer. It's from repotme.com. And it is the Orchid Feed Me. And the um, formula is the 13315. And I'll put it down on the screen uh, what the formula number is. And just real quick, I want to let you guys know, if for those of you guys who do not know fertilizer, fertilizers come with the three numbers. Three, I guess we're gonna call it formula numbers. And they're called the NP NPK numbers. And what the NPK numbers stand for is the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium numbers. So the first number, for example, on this, fertilizer is the 13. So this has 13% nitrogen, 3% phosphorus, and 15% potassium. And what the nitrogen does is it helps the green, it helps to green up your plant. So it's got 13% of, of, the, of the fertilizer is going to help green up your plant. And then your phosphorus is going to go down into its roots and help the roots. And then your potassium is going to promote all around well-being for the plant. So with all of those different components, the, and those are the micro, um, those are the macro nutrients of the, of the fertilizer. So with all of those macro nutrients of the fertilizer, that's what's going to give your orchid a healthy life. That's what's going to give your orchid all of the nutrients that it needs. Now, the fertilizers also have micro nutrients which are different things so for example you know aside from the macronutrients which are the regular um you know nitrate phosphorus and um 
potassium, this also has calcium and magnesium. But then in the mi micronutrients, you also have things like iron, zinc, copper, boron, and other things like that. So, you know, it's just a mixture of all different things. And normally when you guys buy fertilizer, you should have a list of all of the my macronutrients and micronutrients that comes in your fertilizer. But the most important are these three, the three numbers that are on either the bottle or the label or, you know, represented on the, on the formula itself. So this one is a 13, three, 15. So and what I normally like to do is when I use this one is I use it during the summer. I use it weekly or during the, the heat. I live in Florida. So when it's hot and very humid, I take advantage of the humidity and I use it weekly and I use it weekly, which means I use it every week, but I use it very weak. So I use a weak amount of it. And the formula, the, the mixture levels that I use for this is one, I'll show you the little, the little spoon for measurement, which comes with the fertilizer for measurement. I use one of these little spoonfuls. It's about, I would say a teaspoon per gallon during the summer or the hot season. So in Florida, it would be like spring, summer, a little bit of the fall. And then I stop using this type of fertilizer during the, the winter. So one of these teaspoons per gallon. Now, if you're really, really, really bad measure and you cannot measure anything because for the life of me, I can't figure out how much a cup is unless I have a measuring cup and you're trying to measure out water so you can evenly give all of your orchids the proper amount of fertilizer, what I recommend that you do, and this is what I personally do, I wash out a gallon of water. I labeled it fertilizer water for orchids. I put the water that I'm gonna use in here. I put a teaspoon of my fertilizer. I mix it up, put it in my watering canister. And this is where I am use for measuring the water for my orchids. So just a tip, this is what I use. If you are really bad with measuring like I am, don't laugh, not everybody is as bad as me, but in order for me to make sure that my orchids are not getting too little or too much fertilizer, I just wanna make sure I'm really precise. It's the OCD in me. I use a milk jug just to make sure I'm measuring out the correct amount of water. Now, when I'm not using this fertilizer, which means a little bit of during the fall and a little bit of during the winter, and most of the winter, I'm using a slow release fertilizer. Now, this one I purchased directly from the nursery, and this one is an 1868, which means it has 18 nitrogen, six phosphorus, and eight potassium. And it is a slow release, so that means it's gonna release all of those nutrients into the or orchids at a slow pace during 270 days. So during the winter and for a little bit of the fall during those days that it's kind of switching into fall and winter where it gets kind of cold, I use this fertilizer because it is a slow release and orchids normally don't need to get watered that often. So I don't water my orchids that often during the winter and fall. So I do use this one. I also like to use this fertilizer um, mainly uh, during the hotter months on an, on maybe an orchid that is that I see that is suffering. Um, and I, if I, for example, if I have an orchid that might be struggling or I need to repot it, I would I will put one of these teaspoons in the middle of the media as I'm repotting it to to just kind of give it that slow release fertilization during the time that I'm 
uh, watering it and also fertilizing it with this. If it's an orchid that's really, really struggling and an orchid that is really, um, that I feel like is, it just really needs that extra push. So these are just the only two fertilizers that I use for my orchids. So from repotme.com, the Feed Me Formula 13315 and the Orchid Nutri Nutricoat 1868. Now I don't have um, the link of where I purchased this one because I just purchased it from uh, my local nursery here in town. But I am gonna look online and if I find the, the same formula, um, and the same uh, percentage of days of the slow release I will post a link down below in the description for this but I am going to go ahead and post the link down below for the repotme.com feed me one so you guys can check it out if you guys want to purchase this little uh, tub and just to test it out you guys most definitely can like I've mentioned before in some of my, my videos repotme.com has one uh, some of the best orchid supplies and materials that you can possibly ever find so two fertilizers that's all I use short and simple um, I don't use anything else I don't like to complicate my life and I don't like to complicate my orchids I don't feel like they need too much in order to survive and thrive and um, I don't like to give them bloom boosters. I don't like to give flower boosters. I don't like to give any of that to my orchids because I feel like with the proper fertilization and with the proper nutrients, if you are taking care of their root system and if you're taking care of their leaves and you're taking care of the actual plant, the actual orchid, then you will get nice flowers. So. I stay away from all the bloom boosters and all of those um, orchid foods and orchid fertilizers that promote flowering and promote blooms because I like to focus more on the actual orchid, the actual um, mother plants. I like to just focus on the actual root system and all of that. If you do good in that department and your orchid is healthy in that department, then your flower show will be magnificent year after year season after season so just a little bit of tips on what i do it doesn't work for everyone you don't have to do it the way i do it but it's just what i do and as always i like to share things that work for me as they also may work for you so let's go ahead and start with the fertilizing of these little babies here so i can just go with uh go over with you on how i do it what method works best for me, and hopefully you guys will take some of these tips home with you today. Okay, so to start off with, I'm gonna go ahead and first make my, my mix, my formula here, my uh, fertilizing water. So as I mentioned earlier, I like to use a gallon of water just to make sure that I'm using the right amount of fertilizer and water. The, for, um, the instructions on the fertilizer calls for one teaspoon for every gallon, so I assume uh, I always um, project that one gallon of water will be enough water to fertilize all of my little baby orchids. So should be enough. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, I live in an area where I have well water and my well water runs through a salt system and therefore my water is extremely hard water and the salts in my salt system, I've learned from experience they do damage some of the orchids and so i stopped using that um a little bit of go and i started boiling my own water in order to get rid of those salts that are damaging the orchids until the raining season comes and i can collect my own rainwater but in the meantime we are going to use the boiled water that i already have boiling now i do boil water maybe once or twice a week and then i store it in these um buckets with lids so that they can um so i can use it for watering for fertilizing for anything that i need to use the water for when it comes to my orchids so hopefully it'll start raining here soon and i won't have to do this anymore because it is a little bit of a job but in the meantime you know i don't mind doing this because i rather boil water than use the well water with all of the salts and all of that you know those chemicals because it was really affecting 
the way that my orchids were um were doing so i didn't i, I didn't want to do that anymore to them all right so let's go ahead and just get some of this water and fill my gallon here Now, just one thing I do tell you guys, if you have the same issue that I do and you have well water or you have extremely hard water and you reserve to boiling your own water, I could use, you know, um, distilled water. I can go out and buy reverse osmosis water. You know, I can go out and do all of that. I didn't want to. I feel like it's going to get a little bit expensive. Um... I feel like just boiling the water for now was the easiest solution because it's going to start raining here really, really soon. I mean, like I said, I live in Florida and it literally rains 85% of the year. So I didn't want to go out and spend money on buying water when eventually in a few weeks I'm going to have so much water that I'm not even going to know what to do with it. So if you guys do reserve to boiling your own water, Make sure you boil your water and let it sit for at least 48 to 24 hours. 24 to 48 hours. Um, do not use the water that you boiled on your orchids for at least 24 hours. Because even though you may feel like the water is cold to touch, to your touch, it may still be too hot for your orchids roots. And you can risk you know burning them you can risk them rotting with the hot water you can risk a lot of things um going on with them if the water's too hot so just let the water sit boil your water um and let it sit for 24 to 48 hours and then you know you can go ahead and use it now this water i've had sitting here for maybe three days now so it's super cold you know, it's almost room temperature. It's it's more than room temperature, so I don't have a problem with it. All right, so I got my gallon filled here, and now I'm going to go ahead and use my little teaspoon here, measurement, put it in the water, and that's all the fertilizer that water needs for now. The water will like almost turn a little bit greenish but you want to go ahead and give it a good shake because you want to get all that fertilizer in there If you're not, um, since these are seedlings and since these are seedlings and I'm not letting them soak or anything like that, if I'm doing this with bigger mature plants, matured orchids, I would let them sit and soak with the fertilizer water in it. But for the seedlings, I do not do that process. So I'm going to just put the, uh, water I'm going to water over it and just let the water fall into another empty bucket and then toss that water out. So we're going to go ahead and get an empty bucket and start the process. All right, so we got an empty bucket here and I'm going to go ahead and fill my watering canister here with some of the water for the fertilized water. And we're going to go ahead and start with the first orchid. And I just like to water it a little bit. 
And we're just gonna wait for it to just drain all the way out. Make sure there's no water left in the pot. Just completely stop dripping. And then I like to have on the side like a like a metal pan or you know um, a plastic pot or anything where you can just set your pots aside to let them finish drying out. Now you'll notice that some of these seedlings are not doing all that great. I do have some that I don't know if it's because I repot you know I potted them once they came in from shipment but some of them do have some new growth going on. So I'm hoping that eventually they will start producing something here. So I'm going to keep fertilizing them, keep watering them, keep babying them until, you know, we get something. I'm not going to give up on them just yet. So we'll see. This is my heaven scent, so I hope this one doesn't die because I really wanted this one. All right. So I'm not going to go through all of these with you because I do have quite a few and it's going to be a really long video if I do these all with you guys but you guys get the idea you know just if you have seedlings or if you have mature orchids you know don't complicate your life with a bunch of different fertilizers don't over fertilize your um, orchids it's better to under fertilize your orchids and fertilize them frequently than over fertilize your orchids and fertilize them less often. So be very moderate with your fertilization. Be very selective with your fertilizers. Don't change up fertilizers that often. Stick to one fertilizer. Try it maybe for a few months, even up to six months to a year before you change it up. If it's then not working out, then maybe go ahead and try a new one. But your orchids need some time to adjust to those new fertilizers, those new environments, those new climates, everything. So that's just my tip to you. And again, thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed its content. Stay tuned next week. I will be trying to talk to you guys about Vandas. Now I have talked to you guys about Vandas before, but as you know, Vandas are my absolute favorite. So I feel like I have learned a little bit more about them this past uh, few months. So I will be talking to you guys about Vandas. And again, thank you so much for watching. Follow me on Facebook. I've linked our Facebook group link down below. Just click on it and there we are. The group is called Orchid 101. Come join the fun. And thank you so much again. Bye-bye.